this class we discuss about the operation of fluorescent tube light with the glow starter a fluorescent tube light is a discharge lamp the discharge lamps are two types one is lamp which are coated with the fluorescent material discharge ultraviolet radiation they emit radiation of longer wavelength in the visible spectrum example fluorescent tube light and a compact fluorescent tube light type 2 lamps which are emitting light of the same color as produced by the discharge example sodium vapor lamp mercury vapor lamp and neon tubes is what is meant by fluorescence a few materials have the property of refracting light incident on them reflected light has a longer wavelength than that of the incident light this property is called as fluorescence and the materials are known as fluorescent fluorescent materials number 1 zinc silicate its color is green its wavelength is 5200 number 2 calcium tungstate its color is blue its wavelength is 4600 Number 3 magnesium tungstate its color is blue white its wavelength is 4800 Number 4 zinc beryllium silicate its color is yellow white its wavelength is 6000 Number 5 gadmium silicate its color is yellow pink its wavelength is 6100 Number 6 gadmium borate its color is pink its wavelength is 6200 by varying the fluorescent material we can obtain different colors fluorescent tube light is also called as low pressure mercury vapor lamp fluorescent lamps are more energy efficient than incandescent light bulbs of an equivalent brightness because more of the energy input is converted to useful light and less is converted to heat fluorescent lamps requires a ballast which is a device used to provide and control the voltage in the lamp and stabilize the current in the circuit now we will see the constructional detail and the operation of a fluorescent tube light the fluorescent tube light has three major components one is a choke second is a tube light third is a starter tube light is the major component the tube light is filled with the inert gas because it is a low pressure mercury vapor lamp type it is a low pressure discharge lamp the inert gas or argon or krypton plus few drops of mercury is used with some pressure is there inside the tube light why we are using mercury when a light fall on a mercury it reflects a ultraviolet and to improve the efficiency of the operation and the life expectancy we are using mercury mercury is a dangerous material but it is placed inside the tube light and the tube light is coated with the phosphorus material or a fluorescent material to get a different colors here there are two electrodes the electrodes are coated with the electron emitting materials the third is a starter the starter role is to give a momentary interruption in the choke for initial operation for initiation process we need 1000 volts that can be achieved with the help of a choke and a starter so e is equal to ln di by dt When dt is equal to zero, e tends to infinity. Practically, dt is not equal to zero. Therefore, any interruption in the inductive circuit it develops a high voltage. That is the principle behind it. Already I explained what is the difference between a choke and reactor in the interview question. Please refer. So the role of chokes are number one, it produces a high starting voltage for warming up of electrodes so that they may start emitting electrons. one number 2 it reduces the voltage under running condition for starting only we need 1000 volts but running condition 100 volts is enough 
but uh, that has to be controlled. Number three, it controls the amount of current. That is the role of a choke. The third is a starter. There are two types of starter. One is a thermal type starter. That is a current operating device. Number two, glow starter. Is glow starter is a voltage operating device. When you switch on the supply, 230 volts. But we need a higher voltage, 1000 volts. Therefore, full voltage appear across the starter. The starter is, a, starter is made up of bimetallic strips. Two different temperature coefficient metals. The gap between the metals is a few mm, which is placed inside the bulb, filled with a mixture of hydrogen and helium. So, due to very small gap, arc is established. We can see the arc, that's why it is called as a glow starter. The strips are heated and close the circuit. At one stage, it will heat up, immediately it will close. Normally you open, now it will close. This momentary interruption causes a very high voltage. That is the role of a starter. After some time, the strips are cooled down and opened. Again, it will come to a normally open state. Here, in between these two points, that is metals, we are connecting one capacitor. That is 0.05 microfarad to control the radio interference. And moreover, the starter does not consume any power. So, that is why, while we are applying 230 volts, so there is a momentary interruption. 1000 volts, any session takes place, current goes like this, even if you remove the starter. The circuit is removed. So, this part is the current will not go that side. So, if you remove the starter, the tube will operate. So, for momentary, we, uh, momentary state, we need a higher voltage. So, that is the, that's why we are using starter and a choke. Commercially, there are four. Uh, rating tube rates are available. One is uh, for 20 watts, 40 watts, 65 watts and 80 watts. I choose only 20 and 40. This is uh, two are frequently used. The diameter of the tube is, that is tube light diameter is 30.5 mm. The length of the tube light is 2 feet. Its operating voltage is 57 volts. Lumen output is 680 lumens. The second is 40 watt tube line. The diameter is same, 30.5 mm. The length is 121.3 cm or 4 feet. The operating voltage is 103. We are applying 230, even though under operating condition 103 is enough. Lumen output is 1060 lumens. This is the operation of a fluorescent tube light. These are all the advantages of fluorescent tube light. Number 1, its lamp efficacy is 40 lumens per watt. Number 2, life of lamp is about 4000 hours. Number 3, it gives uniform light. Number 4, it has a pleasant light. Number 5, it consumes 50% less energy than incandescent lamp for the same voltage. Number 6, it can be used in any position. Number 7, it can be used both AC and DC supply. The major disadvantages are Number 1, stroboscopic effect. Number 2, magnetic hum associated with the choke causing disturbances. The applications are highly suitable for general illumination. Number 2, they are widely used in commercial buildings, schools, industries and hospitals. It's a popular light. Number three, big zabbers. Big zabber is an electrical device which is used to kill the insects. Contain a fluorescent lamp that emits ultraviolet light, attracting unwanted insects. That is the application of fluorescent tube light. What is meant by stroboscopic effect? The word stroboscopic is an adjective. The noun is stroboscope. Stroboscope is a scientific instrument that provides a flashing light synchronized with the periodic movement of an object can make moving object appear stationary. 
The applications are number one in medicine. Stroboscopes are used to view the vocal cords for diagnosis of conditions that have produced dysphonia. Dysphonia is a medical term for disorders of voice. Number two, flashing lamp strobes are used in nightclubs for lighting effect where they give the impression of dancing in slow motion. Number three, stroboscopes are also used to measure frequency. Now we will see the stroboscopic effect in a tube light. In any type discharge lamp, it actually extinguishes twice per cycle of the supply. So there is a slight stroboscopic effect. After every half cycle, the current in an AC circuit is zero. At that instant, the tube remains off. Due to this periodic fluctuations in the light output of a lamp, caused by the cyclic variations of the current on AC circuits, this effect causes multiple image appearance on moving objects and the movements appears jerky. This effect is more at lower frequencies. The next is methods of minimizing the stroboscopic effect. Number one, by using three lamps on the separate phases of a three phase supply. Number two, by using tin tube lights or double tube lights with one of the choke having a capacitor in series with it and the lamp. So this is the double tube light circuit. Here the tubes are connected in parallel to the line and the series with the one tube is a capacitor. Here this is a capacitor C. So this is the arrangement. In many industries they are using twin tube lights. The reason is to minimize the stroboscopic effect.